Frank, happy new year, buddy. Happy new year. Hopefully, uh, big things ahead for 2021. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to start off some old Lang Syne? Ah, let's see. For old, for old acquaintance, we've got 10 days of old Lang Syne. Shall old acquaintance be forgot in the days of old Lang Syne? Well, 2020 is finally over. It's, uh, 2021 and hopefully this is a big year for everyone yeah, absolutely the whole what is it a uh, new year new me right yep <laughs> new year probably say me but we'll say new me for a while well i'm i know one thing i'm doing um i'm gonna try to commit to make five thousand steps a day at least for now okay maybe i'll increase right. it later in the year whether i'm yeah. at uh, new york and i go for a a blo- I, I went. I walked ten blocks today. Well, twenty blocks actually. I walked ten blocks. You walked walk in the back. Yeah, I walked ten blocks down to uh, 18th Street, and walked ten blocks back. I'm uh, doing awesome. lunch. Yeah, uh, I've I've been going to uh, parks the last few days. Uh, well, Sunday, yeah, I I was watching football all day, and then I didn't really get. To <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, didn't get a chance that's, to that's walk, fair. but. But I went into the city, so I got to walking in from Penn Station to the office. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, and hopefully I'll be making that walk pretty soon myself. I uh, I decided because I've got the house down here, but uh, you know, and I was thinking about I'm going to fix this up before I move up. But Uh-oh. I think it'll be a lot easier if I go ahead and move up, and then one less uh, one less person in the house uh, to get in the way with it getting fixed up. So I think I might move up around uh, March. No, well, that sounds good. Uh, I hit the uh, American Dream last week and played some mini golf on uh, New Year's Eve with somebody. Uh, with, well, we met him, Will. The guy yeah, in the yeah, colored yeah, jersey. I got my ass kicked again at Out of This World. Yeah. And actually won. I actually won at Angry Birds. Nice. How was, how was that course? I like the Angry Birds course. Yeah, well, we'll have to do that. I, I didn't, I didn't want to do it last time because when you mentioned like you know you have to slingshot the first board, you, you don't have to slingshot have it. To. I thought that you was don't have to. Yeah, I, you have the option. Yeah, if you don't have, have to, to slingshot it. Yeah, yeah. Then I, oh yeah, yeah, we'll definitely have to check that out when I get back up. And there. the uh, the family that was playing in front of us was using the slingshot, and it looks very lame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just stick, just stick to hitting with your fucking uh, with the with the uh, with the putter. Do it real. <clears throat> Did you tell them that? No. <laughs> I just imagine you go to like a five year old, be like, hey, "That's pretty lame. You should use the putter." <laughs> oh, it wasn't a five year old that was doing it. It was a fucking putter. The five, the kids were using their fucking putter. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on, check this out. <laughs> I bet that's a cool. I bet that's a cool dad. I bet he's a cool guy. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to check that out when I get back up there. Uh, but uh, but I, I I get this. I shot a forty-five. Nice on Angry Birds. Had a hole in one. Only had one bogey on the eighteen holes. And the, the, the birdies in uh, birdies in uh, and the twos and threes. Nice. Is that is that your best is that your best uh, performance so far? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, we'll have to we'll have to keep track of that too. We'll have to get it like our handicaps or whatnot. And Will got it. Will got it. Uh, got it so sweet too. He actually like uh, filmed the the hole in one, and it just went up like a ridge, and slowly went down into where the hole is. Yeah, yeah, nice. I uh, I played. I'm not sure if you checked it or if you saw it or not. I checked out a. Um, I think it's called. Uh, Boomers, it? it's Boomers. It's down there. Uh, it's near Fort. It's like just north of Fort Lauderdale, but it's literally right next to a like a private airport. It's a nice. It's they've got a, a nice golf course. It's got you know they have the arcade and everything. They have like a little water park kind of deal. I don't know what MLB is doing this year at fucking spring training, but boy, one of these years I got to get down to Port St. Lucie. Well, I mean, hey, listen, like I, like I said, you know, Florida's open. You know, you're more welcome. Yeah, come but who knows what? The, <laughs> who knows what? Uh, what they're gonna do with the? Spring training, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have you down here. Like I said, I mean, it was it was a fun course. Yeah, uh, yep, I got to try to get down there eventually. Maybe sometime in February. Yeah, that was it. Was it was it was fun? It was just it's next to a private airport, and so every like five minutes, there's a jet going off. <sighs> but yeah, it's, it was fun. Yeah, it, it was fun. Well, you know, uh, they they filmed Caddyshack at a golf course near an airport in Florida. I think Fort Lauderdale, in fact. Oh, really? And uh, when the uh, bombing scene was done, when the uh, they were blowing up the course mm -hmm. at the end, yeah, there were like uh, the, the pilots were calling concerned, or people just thought, <laughs> thought that the uh, <laughs> that, uh, plane crashed. Yeah, yeah. Nope, just Bill Murray trying to go for a gopher. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, no, it's I'm I'm having it's it's gonna be a good year, Frank. I think so. It's I mean that was it was it was weird. I, I went out for uh, New Year's Eve. Went out that you know had some friends buy a table and everything at a, at a club, and uh, it was I don't know. It was just it hit me. You know, everyone's like, yeah, you know, forget 2020. It's the worst year ever. You know, and I'm just like, eh, it wasn't too bad. You know, you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, it wasn't too bad for me, but obviously, it's you know, you and I. Um, you know? Yeah, yeah, but you know. I just feel for all the people who are losing their businesses. That's what I'm people, saying. You know, you know. Uh, there was a sandwich place that was near me, and I say was great roast beef sandwiches, roast beef, brown gravy, mozzarella. They called it the Cadillac, and the guy who owned it was actually is, is actually is a sheriff officer for the Texas County Sheriff's Department, canine officer, and he he got he yeah he just got sick. Had to shut down through most of December, and he decided just to not do it. Uh, not really he, uh, I guess the uh, the costs, the rent, yeah, business expenses. So he closed up. No yeah. more, no more Nucci's Heroes. And that, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think about that. It's not just, it's not as simple as, oh, hey, we'll just close the doors for a while. Yeah, like, there are still expenses that go on even if the doors are closed. And uh, they they were good. They had uh, chicken cutlet sandwiches. Good Italian, tiny little place. They didn't even have tables, so it was always a pickup and delivery place anyway. But they had to cut hours, and yeah. it just just it's a shame. Well, we've hopefully that doesn't happen to too many more businesses with the bar stool fund stepping in. Yep, yep, and uh, of course, and 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 of course, you know, one of these days we had to see some of these places and actually check them out for ourselves. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That'd be. I mean, I'm all. I'm all for that. Um, that was actually. So I, I was able to get a hold of the uh, the merch department at uh, Barstool, and so they do have some navy uh, shirts in our sizes, in unit sizes. And um, but there is one little tricky step. I have. To, there's a little hurdle I have to get over. Uh, they said before they mock it up, I have to get Dave's approval of the shirt. That uh -huh. was the idea, and I said. All right, you know, I, I I don't. I've only been here a few months. I'm not sure if I should be uh, DMing Dave for a, a you know a shirt idea, but hopefully with it being part of the bar for the barstool fund, and I I think it maybe can hurt. Like, just DM him. Yeah, I, I I did I did. Well, we'll see. You know, it'd be nice. This is one of those little things where it's like, man, if I was in the office, I could you know stop you know or walk uh, with him. Yeah. Him. Well, I was on the rundown today, so. Yeah. How how'd that go? That went well, of course. The Dolphins' heartbreak yesterday. Uh, just yeah. so, I mean, that literally, that literally was deflating loss, and I looked deflated in that seat yesterday. Yeah, those, those seats will do that to us. They're, they're not, they're not very. I mean, they are unit friendly in the, in the fact that we can sit in them, uh, but they, they don't look too, uh, too appealing. Uh, about eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I just started like my knees started hurting from sitting in that chair. Yeah, I, I actually was there for like close to twelve hours yesterday. I watched them. The, the the all games I I stayed there even through the end of the giant uh, to the to the uh, the Eagles uh, Washington debacle and what yeah. a joke you know I, 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 what what are your thoughts on that I'm torn uh, you know I, first off nobody in that division deserves to be in the playoffs so the Giants you know it, it was it would what happened to them sucks mm -hmm. but. Six and, ten, six and ten, you know, it's not like they they shouldn't cry too fucking hard. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's and that, and that's fair. I'm, I'm at the same place where it's like, but you don't it like was this a team total that. fucking joke, a total fiasco. What the Eagles did was shameful. Yeah, that that Nate Sudfeld does not deserve to ever play. In, he looked like he didn't belong. He he didn't belong on the field. Yeah. And what are you trying out Nate Sudfield for? 
He's been on your roster what for five, three, four years. You you know what he is. Yeah. This isn't a preseason game. This is a game where things are on the line. Yeah. Integrity of the sport. And Jalen Hurts is a rookie. You try out rookies, not Nate Sudfeld. Do you think? Uh, do you think the league's going to do anything about it? It would not surprise me. I don't think the Eagles will be punished, but I think the league will put in something to prevent that from ever happening again. I mean, what? Well, I mean, what could you? I mean, is, I mean, because it would have to be something that's enforceable. I mean, you know, what's well, you know, what's different than or what would what would be enforceable? To, like that would you know where they couldn't just say, oh, hey, you know. Whatever you know, we did what we were just playing the game, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it would, I mean, it would be like an ethics call where you're like, eh, yeah, you know. yep, yeah, yeah. it, it it would be tough to to enforce or or, or outline. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me to see something put into uh, effect. Yeah, that's no. I, I'm on your. I'm I'm on your side though. I, I feel the same way. Where it's you know, yes, it was. It was not for the game at all. You know, there's no, it, it, integrity it, it, factor there. It was not, it was embarrassing for the NFL. What yeah. Happened. Well, and, and, and that's why, and that's why I said the league. Cause I mean, obviously, you know, fans, fans of football can go either way or whatnot, but for the yeah, league, the, 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 the giants screw the giants, the giants, you know, yeah, exactly. Were, so yeah. everyone else. Uh, yeah. So everyone can talk about it. The giants, the giants, you know, they, 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 they they're upset, but you know what? You, you went six and 10. Yeah. That division's a joke. And I think it's the perfect way to end that division, a division that nobody deserves to be in the playoffs, to end it that way because the whole fucking division was a fucking joke to begin with. I, it was a total fucking fiasco. It's a cherry on top of the 2020 season for the NFC East. Oh, the, 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 the NFC East, the, the worst division in the history of the NFL. Yeah, it's um, it's not good. What was was it the NFC West a few years back that did the same thing? I mean, not, not the same thing as the Eagles did, but um, – there's there's certain years where you're just like like nobody in this division. Yeah, the Seahawks, but that was a little different. The Seahawks were hovering near 500. The Rams were hovering yeah. near 500 that year. They, were they played on the last game Rams of the season. Before. They played on the last game of the season, and basically it was the Seahawks would have the tiebreaker. If the Rams would have won, they would have finished eight and eight. Yeah. There you so, go. So, yeah, uh, so this, this was the remember, division. Where nobody ever was really in in anywhere near five hundred in that division. No. They were just trying to be. I mean, the, the, the only team that was ever over five hundred was Washington, and that's because they played the Eagles in Week One. That whole division was terrible all season. I mean, at one at one point, were they like all one and three? Yeah, if if not if not more, if not more. I mean, it it was, and, and I knew all season. That someone in that division is going to fucking win it, get in the playoffs, host the fucking playoff game, and someone with nine, ten wins, and it's the fucking Dolphins. Once you know it, would not make the playoffs. And what now? What did the Dolphins? If the Dolphins would have won yesterday, was it was it a win? Yes. yes, the Colts would be out, and the Colts would be out at eleven and five. Hmm. Now what? Now what would have happened if the if the Jaguars had beat the Colts? Miami would have been in, right? Miami would have been in. Yes. Sorry, Frank. Well. Yeah, that, uh, my neighbor wouldn't have been doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, his, for his mental well-being, we'll, we'll leave it that. Yeah, well, anyway. yeah, his, his mental well-being. Uh, and the player he doesn't like, Jonathan Taylor, is the guy who broke it on the uh, – had that big run that really like sealed the game. Yeah, yeah. Because the Jaguars are hanging in there. You well, see? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they were. I mean, well, I think uh, it was twenty. I, I, I mean, the, I mean, the Jaguars' the offensive line in that game was just atrocious. In that game, yeah. You mean, you mean that season? Oh well, season, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yesterday, yeah, uh, it, it was like it was like the, the, the Colts are just like walking through them. Yeah, it's uh, you know it, when it going again going back to like you know the, the Eagles like that was a clear like. They didn't care at all. They were throwing. What, what, what bothers me as much as Nate Sudfeld is now there was the interception where they blew the whistle. They thought he was down, mm. where he wasn't really down. That yeah. could have been a, that could have been a pick six. But anyway, they got the ball. They got down to the four yard line, and their offense stalled. Uh, Jalen Hurts was overthrowing receivers, underthrowing receivers. So they weren't going to score. They didn't get the touchdown on the four-yard line. 
Yeah. The four yard line down 17 to 14. How do you not kick a field goal to tie the game in the third quarter? And well, and that goes to one of the, uh, you know, again, <clears throat> if there were rules in place, you know, how would, you know, the coach could just say, hey, you know, we were going for the win. You know, we were going, for, you know, we didn't, I didn't like how the offense was playing. I didn't know if we would get another chance to score a touchdown. And, and, and if you listen to Jason Kelsey, and look at the sideline. Look at Jalen Hurts on the sideline yesterday. He didn't win any friends in that locker room. Yeah. This was well, J- Jason Kelsey has probably played his last game with the Eagles. Maybe his last game in the NFL. Yeah. It's possible. Who knows? There's been a, a lot of a lot of people. Zach not- Ertz. Zach Ertz. Probably he might be his might be his last game with the Eagles. Yeah. Maybe his last game in the NFL. Those guys deserved. Better than that. To go out, yeah, to go out at least fighting. Maybe not with a victory, but at least fighting. I well, mean, if, a- if Jalen Hurts loses, Jalen Hurts loses. Yeah. But but just to, just to put that guy in who – and maybe you want to get a look at him, but after the first series, it was clear he had no business being on the field. Yeah. I wonder if I, – I mean, I would love to talk to him and figure out, like, did he even think there was a possibility he was going to even play that day? Well, uh, Peterson told uh, the broadcast at NBC that he wanted to get a look at him. But the whole fourth quarter? Yeah, that's, I mean. You know, even when they got the ball late in the game, put Hurts back in. Try to win. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't in the NFL next season, including a lot of coaches. Well, we it's, it's always Black Monday. Uh, of course, uh, there's, there's three changes in season. Detroit. Houston, Atlanta, and boy, Houston, what a mess that is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Bill O'Brien, what he did to the Texans. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that's not something – that's not something you can just say, we're going to put a new coach in place. He really – did four draft picks for Laramie Tunsil. And that, what was it, Kenny Stills? I think so. And Kenny Stills was released. Tunso is an underachiever. He was an underachiever in Miami, and he's an underachiever in Houston. And what? What he get? He got a fourth. Was it a fourth round pick for Hopkins? Like like a third round pick or something like that. Yeah. And David Johnson, who was oh, good. Yeah. Can't David forget Johnson's good. good. David Johnson's good. Yeah. Also, but, but the hot the Hopkins trade like shattered the locker room. Yeah. He lost. There was the, the, the trust of everyone in that locker room. Yeah, because anybody can go at any time. And and JJ Watt, you saw his reaction last week. Yeah. Uh, the te- if the Texans want to do right by him, they cut him or let him become a free agent, and let him sign with someone. I mean, he he he's been his whole he's had his whole career with Houston. Yeah. Well, if he did he did they're, they're rebuilding and he doesn't he shouldn't be a part of that. If he wants to play any further. He should go to a place where he could win. Yeah, they should do that to him. Give give him a thanks for all the work he's done for them, yeah. and let and him go not, somewhere. Not let him it. go somewhere that he could win. Yeah, JJ Watt deserves that. Well, I tell you what, if wherever he goes, if he does leave, I would definitely look at them uh, as Super Bowl contenders next year. Not necessarily because of him, but just because in my head, that's where my head goes. Where I think of all the, I think of all the you guys. You know where JJ Watt would be good. Would be great in Seattle. Think so. Se- Se- Seattle has a it lacks a pass rusher. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they got a okay secondary. Of course, you know Russell Wilson, a top level quarterback. Yeah. You put someone like J.J. Watt in Seattle, that would be he'd have a chance to win the ring. You think? I mean, how old is he now? And oh, I, he's, I, he's up there in age. He's yeah. He, he's on the he, he's, not that he's, he's in old. the twilight of his career. He's in the twilight of his career. Yeah, well, it's not necessarily that he's old. It's that he's been playing for ten years. Yeah, yeah. He's in the twilight. His best days are gone. But if you put him on a team and surround him with good players, yeah, he could contribute and and ride the coattails to a ring. Yeah, yeah. And not just on the field either. He's a good. He would be a good guy to have in the locker room. He'd be like a like I picture Calais Campbell. You know. Yeah. He's, a, he's a good guy. He's a veteran. He's somebody that you know the young guys can look up to. I mean, uh, 
uh, poor Larry Fitzgerald uh, in a Arizona. But you know what? Uh, I mean, uh, he might be t uh, finished his career now. And yeah. What if, uh, the Cardinals, what a whimper they went out with yesterday. Yeah, I, I mean, early on in the season, I thought Kyler Murray and them were going to go a long way. Oh, they, uh, Murray got, like, uh, dinged up yesterday, missed half the game. They put that backup in who just couldn't throw. Yeah. He was almost as bad as Nate Sudfeld. Uh, and then they put Kyler Murray in the game late after, but they just couldn't. It, he just wasn't right. He, I mean, he, yeah. it looked like he, he tweaked a hamstring or something. See, and that's – I mean, at that point, you're like, you know, his last game of the season – don't and uh, Fitzgerald was actually hurt yesterday too, and so he didn't really play. And a lot, a lot of players are not going to be in the NFL next year, but a lot but, of coaches. But, too, so. but but Fitzgerald at least had his shot. Yeah, he was in the Super Bowl, and yeah. if it wasn't for Santonio Holmes making that catch, he probably would have been the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. Well, what about coaches? Well, okay, no, actually, I want to I want to mention this. So uh, we we can talk about coaches first. So uh, Marone's out. So we're gonna yeah, go. well, that's not a surprise. The three it's coaches that were fired today were no surprises. If you've been, I well, so I, I'm gonna say this. I, I'm not. I guess I'm not surprised that Gates was fired. But wh why in the world didn't they do it sooner? Well, they guess they just wanted to wait out the year. Uh, mean, you know, the Jets, the Jets are in a situation where they're, where, where they're, uh, where they're in a little bit of an owner flux. Yeah. Although it's the same family. See, uh, uh, issues. Yeah, Chris Johnson has been running the team the last four years. Woody Johnson is actually the owner. His brother. Woody yeah. Johnson has been working for uh, Donald Trump as the ambassador to England. Now, that ends on uh, when Biden gets it's sworn in. Yeah. So... We're going to have like a Robin Hood moment where the... The, bro the brother comes back. I don't know. My, all of a sudden, my Dell, I'm on my fucking Dell. Oh, God. Why is this freezing like this? No worries. You're good. I'm now. not even touching anything. Well, are we going to are we gonna have like a Robin Hood moment where the brother comes back and, and finds, you know, his brother has been... You know, King Richard uh, finds or no, who who is the king? Anyway, he's gonna find out his brother's like really just been doing a terrible job and take over. Yeah, he's good. That's just basically gonna happen. And uh, I think Chris Johnson would have wanted to keep Adam Gase, but the there would have been a fan like the fans would have just gone nuts if he if they brought back Adam Gase. I uh, it's yeah. Well, it's just one of those things. Like I said, I'm not surprised that they fired him. I am surprised they waited until the last day. Or, you know, yeah, until well, you know, it, it, in the NFL, it's almost pointless to fire a coach midseason, unless he's like really, really bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, it lets it lets I guess it lets the players in the locker room know, hey, like next year is going to be better. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why my my screen keeps freezing. You're good. We can hear you. But um, yeah. So well, Doug Marone's out um after what four years? Only one of them was uh, a good year. Uh, and 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 it's and it just a mystery to me. It's just a mystery to me. Uh, they had that one year that just, just like they were just did one or two plays away from going to Super Bowl, and it just fell apart so fast that Miles Jack wasn't down. Like that's all. I'll, I'll I'll say that till the day I die. Miles Jack was not down, and if that even even if even if even if we've gotten the ball. Uh, and and he would have been uh, yeah anyway yeah that was 2017 that was 2017 um he wrote on that for for a couple couple more horrible seasons um i i, I mean uh, they, and they got off to that good start in 2018 yeah we beat the patriots they, they beat the patriots week 2 and then it just like crumbled yeah i mean jalen well, uh, ramsey basically sunk the ship yeah, well, that's yeah, and we, we've talked about that before. Where it's you can you can you can talk all the nonsense you want about outside the locker room or other teams, but as soon as you talk, start talking about your own team, that that becomes an issue. Uh, I mean, you know, he was lying. Um, he wasn't he wasn't telling the truth um, in order to not play. You know, he said he was injured. He said he was you know his girlfriend was having a kid. You know, stuff that you can't really you know. 
It was so, just a bad look. It was a bad look. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he, he was a young guy. He, I mean, you know, we – I. At the end of the day, you know, we we see them as athletes, we see them as NFL players, but they're still people, you know. And I know plenty, of, I know plenty of people in my life who have uh, who have lied to get out of work. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So in that sense, it's not really. It's just that he's kind of on a pedestal as far as you know, a, a guy that makes millions of dollars to do his job. So uh, and have people cheer him on, but it was it was uh, yeah. it was. It, I mean, uh, I actually picked them to win the Super Bowl that year. My pre, in my, uh, I don't think I do win the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, that I mean, year. after, after twenty seventeen, you know, what well, you know, you it would be silly to not think they could at least go to the Super Bowl. But one thing that one thing that surprised me though, and I tweeted about it today, uh, Shad Khan. I I want to get a shirt that almost is like either sell the team or relocate the team, like but just do it already. His comment today after he fired Doug Barone was that he wants to ba- – that first of all, he had control over the roster in 2020. I, I'm kind of curious, does that mean that he released Fournette or does that mean that Dave Caldwell re- – I mean, you know, but he said that he – like he has roster control and and he's going to let the, the future GM, whoever it may be, like he wants to keep the ro- – he wants to keep control of the roster oh, boy. For, the, for the time being or for the near future. It, and I'm just like – why? Why would you hire a GM if you want roster control? That, you know, that, oh, I, I have no problem with have owners. Have, I have no problem with owners having insight. Yeah, but but uh, the, the, yeah. but, it, the, but the, uh, when the owners get involved too much, that's when things start getting fucked up. It's it's your team. You can do whatever you can do whatever you want with it. I understand that. It's not a. It, well, it's why the, it's why the Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl in twenty five years. There you go. I just it's it's just why why would you either, it, it, either you be the GM and that way we can blame you as an owner as well as the GM or let a GM be a GM and we'll see how they do. I mean the Cowboys came off two straight Super Bowls and they were like at a cocktail party off like in the middle of April and and uh, Jerry Jones started spouting off. Saying that I could, uh, Jimmy Johnson is gets too much credit. I should get the credit. I I'm the one that hired him. I, I'm the one that made the final decision for players. And Jimmy Johnson's like, "What's he talking about? I've made every decision." And and, and they, they 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 had a fight over who should get and take credit for this. The uh, Cowboys going from one in fifteen uh, to two Super Bowls in just a few years. Meanwhile, you have the people off to the sideline wearing multiple rings, going. I don't care which one of y'all says you took credit. I'm I am wearing rings. So he ended up firing him for Barry Switzer, and of course Switzer won that one championship because you know it was still Jimmy Johnson's team. Still the team, yeah. But when those players started to become free agents, when those players started to leave, when those players got old, Cow NFC Championship game in 25 years. I just, it's, you know, I, I think what, it was the Detroit or Chicago. No, de, yeah, Detroit and Chicago, you know, they're the, like the sell the team shirts. At this point, like, and we, we've talked about it before, uh, either sell the team or relocate one or the other. I don't, like, it's almost to the point where I don't even care anymore. Like, you're, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put myself out there to get hurt again. I don't know, know what, I don't know exactly what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know what the, the McCaskies family is actually doing. I know Virginia McCaskey's almost a hundred years old. Yeah, I um, I think I was I was talking to somebody because I was I went to Chicago a few weeks ago and I talked to the guys there, and somebody had mentioned that it was difficult for them because that's all they have, like that's all the family has are the Bears. So like outside, they are, they're the Hallis family. It's 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 George Hallis's daughter. George Hallis founded the NFL. Yeah, but the but the Bears, as far as like family wealth, like that's all they have is oh the well, screw the family wealth. <laughs> And I know I don't know that in a bad way. No, I understand. Do you I, the Mets? The Khan. Mets just got sold. The Will Ponds were broke. Yeah, they just got sold for like two billion something dollars. Yeah, the Bears, the Chicago Bears, could probably sell for three billion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so when we did, tri- oh, you weren't on my team, but when we did trivia. Like all the Chicago teams were up there with the New York teams as far as most valuable franchises. But when I, when I think of an owner, I think of Shad Khan. Shad Khan, 
Mm-hmm. It has his bumpers with like Southeast Toyota. He has the AEW. He has Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got the Fulham Football Club. He has the Black News Network that he started uh, last year. It, he has a sh- like so many strings of income coming in. And the idea that he talks about profitability and everything with the Jaguars, it's like, this is a toy. This is a a toy for billionaires. And and we understand that. And and that's fine. But it's a toy. If it either, either have the toy over there just so you can, so you can say you own it or, or sell it and get rid of it. I, I just don't, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired of it being run like a business that, yeah. Anyway, he's, he, he, uh, one of these days, uh, I, I think his true desire is for the team to be in London, but it's just not feasible. No, yeah, ex- ex- yeah, exactly. And and again, like I said, I, I've gotten to the point now where it's sell it or relocate. Like, go ahead and do it. Just I'm I'm tired of uh, don't mess around and you know don't waste ten years of my life as a putting my you know money and my hopes into a, a football organization that you're purposely running into the ground. It's a it's a it's a perfect circle where you put a bad product on the field, they do bad, so less people come to the game, and then you complain because less people come to the game, you're not bringing any money, so it's not profitable. Meanwhile, you're putting a horrible product on the field that nobody wants to come to, and you're just giving yourself an excuse after five or ten years to leave. Uh, and they did, and it just just it just it's stunning how fast it just fell apart. Yeah, yeah. It, don't it, know. It, yeah, 2017 was just a few years ago. That, that, this, that this team was it, – and it started out well in 2018, and it's just like – just yeah. – and, 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 the, and the people uh, – Jalen Ramsey really has to take a major uh, load of the blame. I guess he didn't want to be in Jacksonville, so he just completely like – just like dragged the yeah. trophy uh, – dra- dragged the trophy around the, uh, the parking lot. <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's – I – I think it really is a matter of Tom Coughlin was at because Tom Coughlin came in in 2018. And, you know, t- when Tom Coughlin was in Jacksonville originally, and I think he was this way in New York too. He didn't know oh, it was his, he was his, his way to the highway. Yeah. And, and here's the deal. New York has two Super Bowl rings. You see, the thing was this, that worked. Did that my way or the highway thing? It, 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 it it just doesn't work anymore. It just can't it work. Works, anymore. It works if everyone's pe- bought in. Yeah. If everyone's bought in, because then you'll you'll still have outliers. There's there's always going to people. There's always going to be people that don't buy in. But if you have a, a lot of people that are bought in, there's a tipping point where even the outliers get shunned. They get pushed away. And the, you know, it's I, I kind of think of that way as a, um, you know, it, w- that's why guys want to go to Brady. Because they think, hey, here's my chance to get a ring. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll do what I need to do to get the ring. And and Belichick is able to get that because Brady was able to was his, his vanguard. Yeah. And, and but uh, with the J- Jacksonville, it just was just and Blake Bortles, you know, he was a very mediocre quarterback yeah. who had a decent season one year. Mediocre quarterbacks win Super Bowls. Yeah. Well. The, Bortles could have won that year if it, 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 if one or two plays happened differently. Yeah, and that would and that would have been Philadelphia. It would have been Philadelphia Jacksonville. Yeah, man, that was a, it. Was a great season. I went. I went. That was the year I went to London. Saw him beat up the Ravens. I went. Came home. They they played the home playoff game against Buffalo. Got to see that where Jalen Ramsey sealed the deal with the last uh, last second interception. It would have been real nice to finish it off with the Super Bowl in Minnesota. And and, uh, and then you had the uh, two doubt the, 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 and the, the year that I think really got away from the Jaguars is 1999. Well, and that's yeah. I mean that goes back to uh, well 19 was 99 the year they lost the Titans three times. Yes, or was that 98, 99. Yeah, one well, of course. Then 2000 came along. And there was cap. We had cap space issues and people had to go. Yeah, it's just. Uh, the, the, that's the lesson. The, the, if you're there, you have to try to win, and win because you never know what's going to happen the next year. Yeah. The 1998 Jets, they were a good team. They were up 10 nothing in the third quarter against the Broncos. And then, that, and then, and then the Broncos just like flipped the switch, won yeah. the game, won the Super Bowl. And uh, the next year, week one, Vinny Testaverde tears his Achilles and 
that basically ended that era of the Jets. Like, yeah. Well, Maroon's out. Gase is out. Uh, were you surprised that uh, that uh, <laughs> were you surprised that the uh, Chargers got rid of the coach? There uh, was Anthony Lynn. Yes. Uh, that, no, that didn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of games this year where he just made p- bizarre, puzzling decisions, and uh, the uh, the Chargers actually ended the season well. They were playing well at the end of the year. They uh, I think they won the last four games. Can you imagine if if they had better coaching? There, there was like two or three games, and and they lost several games like in the last minute. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they would. Uh, they should have uh, with the talent that the uh, the Chargers had. Uh, Justin Herbert's going to be the rookie of the year. Uh, yeah. With the yeah, the, 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 the with the, the way he played, with the talent the Chargers had, that team should have at least won nine games. Yeah. Now I'm I'm glad you mentioned Herbert being the rookie of the year. Uh, is Tua your guy? I'm very concerned at how he played at the end of the year. The last couple of games were very bad. Do you, I mean, what do you, is there a concern that maybe he might not be the guy or is it a matter of should you, maybe, maybe they started him too soon? What I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, it was a bizarre year. Didn't have a full preseason. Didn't have a, a full training camp. Yeah, but neither did Herbert. Well, Herbert wasn't coming off major uh, thigh, uh, hip surgery. Okay. So, give him a year. You got to give you got to give him at least another year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, mean, yeah. You have to at least try. Yeah. So, you draft maybe Penn Ace well. Uh, if you want to like uh, shore up the offensive line, or you maybe uh, look to to add one of those speed receivers. Uh, what I would like to do is I, I, I the Dolphins have the Texans yeah. uh, second round pick. They have their own pick, which is going to be probably round number 20. And uh, think about uh, either uh, early second round or uh, late uh, first round drafting uh, Travis Etienne. Yeah. What? So uh, going back to like Tatua, I mean, do you think do you think the Dolphins would be in the playoffs right now if they would have kept Fitzpatrick in the game? Like if they would have just kept starting him? Hmm. They might have won that Denver game. Uh, they tried to uh, they tried to bring in Fitzpatrick late. Yeah, but he couldn't rally them like he did in uh, Vegas. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, they would have lost the Chief game no matter what, mm-hmm. and they would have lost the Buffalo game no matter what. So yeah. maybe Fitzpatrick wins the Denver game and that gets him in. But that's the one game that would have been different. That's the one game maybe it would have been different. Because they did the Chiefs. Two played well against the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. He didn't have a bad game. They just lost to the Chiefs. <laughs> a lot of teams do that. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bills just are so fucking hot right now. They're just they're just just they're just, they're just they're, I mean, uh we might have to start paneling that fucking uh Road trip because the fucking bills are playing so good yeah, right now. Absolutely. Well, that's, I pulled. A, I did a, a jersey break uh, last night where uh, I don't know if you know this. There's actually uh, there's boxes. They're they're kind of like mystery boxes. They're they call them gold rush uh, boxes, but they just have an autographed jersey inside, Ooh. and it's, it's a football jersey. And you don't know what you don't know who the team is. You don't know who the player is. It's just an autographed jersey. And uh, I did a little for the barstool fund. I sold, you know, all 32 teams you get, I, you get for 10 bucks, you get entry into this, you know, one box and there's a chance that, you know, your team gets pulled. Well, one of the uh, jerseys I pulled was a Josh Allen and it's, it's a beautiful bill. It's a beautiful Buffalo Bills jersey. It's got Josh Allen and he did even did the hashtag Bills Mafia. Huh. And it, it, it's a beautiful jersey. I'm, you know, somebody got it. They were lucky enough to get it, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to start playing. We might we might have to start playing in that game or that uh, that road trip. They're looking good. I mean, I have no doubt they're going to beat the Colts. Yeah, and then it's going to be yeah. Who, uh, they'll have uh, they'll have two home playoff games. These are the two seed. Well, and and you know, and I'll throw this out there. Good for Philip Rivers, you know, actually coming into the to Indianapolis and, and doing something, you know. 
Yeah, but you know, much. old man Rivers, he ain't what he used to be. Yeah, no, he's not. But you know, he 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 was able to get them in the playoffs. I, I you know, I thought it was just kind of a they were kind of bringing him in to have a veteran QB for a season or two. But he actually is, you know, Did, whoever the Colts end up with, and I think they're going to end up with somebody. They're either going to end up with Carson Wentz. They're either going to end up with they, with Sam Darnold, one of these quarterbacks, and Frank Reich's going to fix him. Yeah. Yeah, well, and that's and I think I think I've heard uh, I've heard KFC mention that before, and and uh, a couple other people. Yeah, I mean, with when the quarterbacks leave wherever they are now, um, that's it's not that they're bad quarterbacks, and you know, hopefully they understand that you know when they get cut because they will get cut or released. It's not because they're bad quarterbacks; they're just not in the right system. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I've always said this: if uh, Tom Brady was drafted by the uh, Detroit Lions. You'd be selling insurance right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's um it's amazing to see. Yeah, it's 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 there's so much oh that's you know what goes into it. There's so much that has, there's so much stuff that has to be uh luck and you know it's it's not it's not you all know, you know what you know what's funny is I watched Diane Don Orlowski talking now about integrity of the game. Oh yeah <laughs> and uh, about how bad Nate Sudfeld is. Yeah. It's just it's just one of those things where it's uh, it's so obvious what was happening. So I it's it, again, it's it's not something where it, any reasonable person could say, eh, maybe you know, maybe they were just doing you know, no. And and the Eagles even jumping off sides was just like the cherry on top. I've I've had this argument with I don't know how many people. The idea of tanking, obviously tanking is a thing, like obviously, obviously it's a real thing that happens. But the idea that there are players out on the field purposely missing assignments, uh, I just I, I there's too many players and there's too and when I say players, I mean literal pieces. There's too many things and too many individuals involved to to really tank. The Jaguar, the Jaguars weren't tanking; they just suck. Yeah, at the end of the day, those like Marone still wants to get hired somewhere else. Dave Caldwell, the GM, still wants to get hired somewhere else. The idea that a a GM would perfect or purposefully tank, not not hey give away players in order to get picks in order to try and rebuild, that's 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 tanking. That that means that they're tanking, but that tank is like a side effect of the rebuilding process. They're not purposefully losing, um, and there's just too many there's too many people and positions involved. But there, uh, but yeah, when it came to the Eagles, though, you're just like yeah, okay, yeah, like this is clearly. They just don't care. That, 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 that was pathetic. That was, yeah. I mean, I, I don't get. You want to try out Nate Sudfeld? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have a rookie quarterback. Yeah. That you still don't even know about. Are you yeah. sure Jalen Hurts is going to be good? You know how you learn how Jalen Hurts is going to be good? You let him play the fourth quarter. Yeah. I, I mean, it would it, it just just in a, game, in a game that doesn't matter. You know, I, if, I mean, if, if, if Jalen plays, if, if, if Jalen Hurts goes out there and and stinks it up and you lose, you can oh, live with that. Yeah. But, or if he goes out there and, and he calls it in, you know, he, he you know he phones it in, you know, and he's not actually playing because it, there's nothing to play for. That says a lot about him as you know as an NFL player. You know, like hey, if if it's halfway through the season, y'all haven't won a game yet. Is but, he really yeah, but, but yeah, but when it was seventeen fourteen in the third quarter after that interception. Yeah, you don't try to tie the game. That's when I started to say this is something's up. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. I can't. I, and I didn't bet on the game, but I, I can't imagine if you if you bet on the game. I did. Mm. Hmm. Yep. I'm sure. I'm sure half the people that bet on the game were very happy about it. And but. I had Eagles money line. Yep. Well, Frank, that, I'm I'm glad you mentioned Eagles. I'm glad you uh, glad you mentioned betting. Um, so this is something I think we should do. Um, I think we should keep track of our bets now. I think we should do it on the on the podcast. Uh, you know, new year, new unit. Uh, you know, we can we'll start fresh. Maybe we'll start first round of playoffs. All right, that sounds good. Uh, I went two and two on the on the, the New Year's bowl games. Uh, uh, and two and two on the January second bowl games. And it went you know, one and four yesterday. All right. Well, how about this? Well, well, we can we can count those if you want them. I haven't I haven't made any bets. <clears throat> we can count those if you want them, or we can start uh, this 
we can start with the the national championship game and the playoffs. I think that's better. Starting okay. with the uh, playoffs. Cool. Well, so we'll start with the playoffs, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll come up with a cool little graph for it and everything. But we'll uh, we'll um, I think we <laughs> maybe we'll do the, the biggest unit, you know, and that'll be like maybe we get some kind of trophy or some some kind of plaque for it or whatever. Well, you know me, I do those ten dollar bets. Yeah. Well, and that well, and that's and that's why we do the. It, that's why it's kind of funny because it's it's a unit, so it's the the biggest. Unit. We'll, we'll we'll come up with something, but yeah, we'll we'll keep track of our records. I know a lot of people are are interested in your record for sure because you seem to be terrible. You, I, 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 don't, I don't think you're terrible. I don't think you're terrible. I think it's. Bush. I think in the bathroom. <laughs> I think with a lot of things, just like just like most. Go people, kryptonite! Go kryptonite! <laughs> Hang on! No. I think with a lot of people, you know, it's it's the negative, the 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 losses always feel worse. You always pro- project the losses yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Well, when when when, they, when people find out, I I bet that they have the same bet as me. They rip up their tickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well, and that's what's funny when 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 people tell me like uh, somebody, so um, yeah, somebody I I put you know Jaguars are going to win, lock it in. And they said, "Oh, you know, don't go against the can't lose parlay." I'm like, "No, you you won't be going against the can't lose parlay. Like you want, you, if you know my record, you want that happening." Uh, but yeah, so okay, cool. Well, so we're starting. Uh, we'll we'll have some kind of, you know, something to keep track of all of our picks and everything. Well, uh, somebody actually uh, wanted me to uh, pick the Eagles money line. Oh yeah. Yep. And it was a Washington fan that did it. <laughs> Of course it was. That makes sense. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll get something like that set up, um, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll we'll start um we'll start we'll start planning out this Buffalo road trip. I I love the idea. you said it first. You know, right that uh, that first night. Boop. Uh, it'll be a uh, Frank and Doug's uh, Booper Soul road trip. <laughs> Booper Soul road trip. Yeah. From from uh, from Buffalo to Tampa Bay, and I, yeah, I'm all about it. Uh, Valerie, Valera, Valerie, Valera. <laughs> I'm all about it, Frank. I think it'll be a fun time. I mean, you know, and it'll be fun for the buff for buff. I mean, because they've just got a great fan base. You know, uh, they're they're crazy people. They're breaking tables and all that nonsense. Uh, but it's it'd be fun to see them get excited for a Super Bowl. Yep. So and if, uh, Michelangelo makes my movie. That might also be good. Yeah. Yep. What uh? What movie? What movies he making now? Well, uh, he did, did, and I don't know how we're gonna do. That. We'll, we'll do. We're gonna do it. But one of these days we'll do it, and it's gonna be a uh, a, a, a guy in a dirt world out of this way, like island. Oh nation, yeah, 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 yeah. Where he doesn't know anything outside the world. It's it, it's like completely isolated. But they do get these shirts. These uh. The Super Bowl loser shirts. Yeah. And he grows up believing that the Bills won four straight Super Bowls. And his dream is to come to America and actually see a Buffalo Bills game. Frank, I would like to I would like to uh, put my name in the hat as producer of this film. I would I would love to come on as executive producer of your film and, uh, and help you with that. I mean, we did. We're not, uh, I'm talking to Michelangelo about it. You know, Michelangelo's able to let. Yeah, yeah. Might, uh, might make some of those things happen, but I think that would be like the like, like just like a a great mo- movie, and th- that he just like is his, he sees those four Super Bowl loser jerseys and thinks they actually won. Yeah, and he wants to come and see the great Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I'm I'm all, I'm all about it, Frank. I love the I love the idea. Uh, you know, I, I spent some time in Hollywood, um, you know, and uh, as Hollywood Dugs, and I'm, I'm doing my own little show. Well, not my own, but I'm supposed to be in a short film in Nashville this month. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about the Hollywood Dugs. I'm all about producing. And, you know, you tell me how much money you need. And I'll well, write I, did, I did a little acting uh, in uh, college that uh, were on, like, some short films. Oh, yeah? You might see those things pop up on my uh, throwback Thursdays coming soon. I hope so. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, hey, Frank. It was it was a pleasure, pleasure talking to you. There's a lot of a lot of changes coming up, and the uh, playoffs are starting. It's ex- it's exciting time if you like football. Yep. Uh, but yeah, and, and and it's going to be amazing. There's going to be two triple headers this weekend, and then that follows up on Monday with the national championship game. And of course, uh, one of the craziest things is is uh, the game on Sunday is one of them is going to be on Nickelodeon. 
Yeah. That's yeah. They're gonna have they're gonna have all the, like the Nickelodeon stuff going on in it. That's gonna be one fucking bizarre game to watch. <laughs> is, it actually, you, is it actually gonna be on Nickelodeon? Yes. I thought they I thought it was like Nickelodeon themed, like Nickelodeon was paying for like a like a themed package. I didn't no. know it was actually gonna be on the channel. It's the game's gonna be on Nickelodeon. What and why is that? Well, the game's also gonna be on CBS. Okay, but, gotcha. But, but it's gonna be on Nickelodeon with like just like SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob and like slime and things yeah, like yeah. that. Okay, okay. So it'll actually be okay. So that well, hey, well you know we'll have to check that out too. See see what it's, the difference is. See maybe the kids are getting a better show. Uh, and that's and that's gonna be the Saints, uh well naturally it's just fucking Saints. The Saints <laughs> and the Bears. It's the NFL just lo- the NFL loves fucking with the Saints. Yeah, yeah. It's um yeah, well and Sean and Sean Payton where Sean Payton where's the uh, the the bozo you know, or, or you know, Roger Goodell clown shirt. Um, but you know, just just we're barely enough. Yeah, to- yeah, and, and you know that shirt, like we're like like like, like that that shirt. You might as well be, uh, be uh, like uh, setting uh, Roger Goodell on fire because he like really hates that shirt. Yeah, well, and you know, and and as he should because it it shows him what what a clown he is. Uh, I I mean, it shows you how thin skin he is. I mean, the fact that he didn't let Dave come over to his house after yeah. he won the. Uh, the auction is just just shows you that he has no sense of humor. Yeah, nothing. He's just yeah. a total fucking idiot and humorless. And, and, and you see the league find uh, Alvin Kamara for wearing the red and green shoes. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. You know. Yeah. I I I mean uh, I mean uh, yeah, historic performance. I mean uh, the, well the, 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 I, so I guess uh, Roger Goodell's middle name is Scrooge. He's just uh he's that type of guy. Yeah, I, I don't I don't yeah, I don't know how you can make fifty million or whatever a year and, and be that way. I, you know, but hey, uh, the fact he gets fifty million is just there there is not a person in the world that deserves fifty million less than him. <laughs> well, Frank, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, I'm excited. Playoffs are starting, national championship, possible booper soul road trip. I'm excited. I hope you are too. And, 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 and speaking of uh, Scott Hansen of uh, the, the real Red Zone host, not the yeah, not yeah. that not that uh, Andrew Siciliano, who's just awful, gave uh, money to the Barstool Fund yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. Where's it's Roger? Good- Where's Roger Goodell? Hello, Roger. You got fifty fucking million, you clown. It's it's amazing, but uh, it's Kid Rock donated. I saw Kid Rock donated a hundred thousand, yep, and it, it, it's well, I mean, you know we're all doing our own little thing. I mean, I did like a jer- this is news. I haven't I haven't told anyone else this, but um, so I did the I did the uh, Jersey break. That was fun to do, and you know everyone. If you don't win, hey, it's still it's ten. It's not just ten bucks going to some. You know, it's not ten bucks going to me, and you know, like I'm not making any money off. It's ten bucks that goes to the barstool fund. So. Um, that was that was fun and everything, but I got a hold of a major uh, sports card company that is going to be sending me boxes so that I can actually do breaks. And they're they're sending me boxes of cards to break for them. So and I'll be we'll be auctioning off those spots for uh, for the bars. Oh, that sounds party. good. That sounds good. And you know, be uh, you know, be good down the line. Uh, maybe when things open up a little bit, uh, uh, for the bars to a fun. Uh, mm. Bid for uh, lunches with uh, the units. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if any, any millionaires are out there that want to have lunch with us. But you know, I'm I'm down to eat lunch with somebody for sure. Yep, that sounds good. Well, Frank, it was a pleasure to talk with you. Um, I'll be back in the office real soon. Let's get that Booper Soul uh, road trip. Let's get the itinerary started. Um, but that's barstool units for today. All right. Well, when we do the next show uh, in eight days. Yeah. After the championship game, the day after the championship game, we should do it. Absolutely. For sure. So uh, I'm Coach Duggs. This is Barstool Units. Frank the Tank. Take I'm us Frank out. the Tank. Units, the units. You are watching units. Barstool Units show. It's the units, the units. Barstool Units. They're going to go to the booper soul. See you next week. Click like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Barstool Units.